Hello, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and uh, welcome to a videoless stream. Um, for the record, Gavin, I'm 100% on board for doing Twitch Sings MSP Geek Edition. So, can everyone hear me okay? Is there any issues with audio? As is normal. Can you not really hear me? Audio feedback. Great. Hold on. Okay. Well, this is going to be fun. Audio, audio, yeah, there's always audio issues. Always. There's never not an audio issue. Uh, I'm not doing one tonight. I'm just, I'm just hanging out chatting. All right, so uh, I'm plugged in, and I can hear myself now, at least. Um, I can hear the audio. Is this any better? Check, check, mic check. I have to wait for it to sync. There we go. That's much louder. Yes, I'm aware of that. I don't. I still don't know. Sing, sing a bit. No, I'm good. Um, so that the white noise I can't fix, and I don't know why. Uh, so welcome to a surprise Geekcast stream. Um, I'm doing this because I was asked for my code for my HTML templates, and it's not the first time or the hundredth time probably I've been asked for that. So I figured I would do a quick geek cast on the stream itself to see, uh, you know, so that everyone can see it, everyone can get it. Um, I will uh, upload the code base, the HTML when I'm done, um, to MSP Geek on, in the geek cast section. When we're all said and done with, so you can download it and not have to retype what I'm going to type. Because who wants to actually work? Right? So, first of all, for those who don't know, you can apply HTML templates to a lot of different things inside of ConnectWise Manage. You can apply them to uh, email notifications, technician replies, uh, marketing emails, marketing campaigns, um, uh, and a few other things um, that you can set up and, and brand and make your own inside of Manage. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's fairly simple to set these up and do. The problem is it confuses a lot of people on... Bye, Martin. Uh, it confuses a lot of people on what to go, where to do, how to do it, and HTML is so difficult to do, and you have CSS and but JavaScript and, you know... So everyone just wants the easy workaround. And so we're going to set ours up. What you're looking at is the MSP Geek um, dev server, basically. Um, ConnectWise was nice enough to have this last year, and we've been utilizing it. And we're going to be continuing utilizing it, hopefully in the future, setting up more on how to set up Manage itself. Um, so we're going to go to setup tables and we're going to go to service boards. I'm just going to pick one of these. It doesn't matter. We're going to go to boards and then we're going to go to status. 
So as you can see, these are all the statuses we have. And then if you look over here under notification steps, this is what you want to look for. This will do what you want to do when you want to do it. Let's say you put it in a status. You can have it email a client. You can have it email um, a technician. You can have it do uh, email specific individuals. Um, so let's say you want to email uh, the, the, a new contact saying, hey, we got your ticket. And please don't contact us until we contact you. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we can at least email them saying, hey, we got it. You know, you don't have to call in after you send the email in. Um, so it's very simple. Um, this is a what they call a what you see is what you get busy wig editor. And you can set up however you want. You can bold. Um, Uh, so, and you can, you know, do some kind of fancy stuff. And make it look all kind of nice and fancy. Uh, alternatively, you can come into the source section and actually code out a fancy HTML page that will display when you send out uh, an email. Um, and as you can see, ConnectWise does that with their, their editor. It's basically just a different versions of, you know, it's just HTML. All these buttons create HTML. Personally, I don't like using these. I like to design mine in a an editor, Notepad, Notepad++, Sublime, and view my results inside of, uh, you know, a, a web browser. So I know how it renders. Um, now you have to be careful. Um, when you put an, an email template, it's an email template. And while you can get super creative and super fancy and super amazing with these things, they have to render inside an email client. You just have to remember that. And they've gotten much better in, in recent memory, but you just have to remember the more you do, the more you'll have to test um, different email clients depending on what you service and what you utilize. Um, so this is the this is the one that I've been utilizing uh, since like 2015, um, and as you can see, it's massive, and it's blue, and it's got some information in it. So anything inside brackets is something ConnectWise will replace with data. Um, so if we go back into the setup tables themselves and we scroll up here, these tokens are everything you can include that Manage will replace with. So if you want to replace, if you want to include, uh, let's say the contact's phone number, if you just double click, full ticket details, this will output the full ticket details. Um, and you have to be careful with some of this because it will dump a lot of data on, uh, if you're not sure exactly what it is, like uh, SR detail will put the entire um, the entire well, you got to remember something uh, that you know, Batman. That uh, that's like stripped of all uh, identifying features, um, and oh, what's it's, it's of course it's a watered down version. I don't have a logo or anything on it. it doesn't need a logo anyway. Um, so uh, some of these will give you what you want. Some of these will not. Um, if you're not sure, um, just click the help button up here and it'll take you straight to the university and you can find what individual um, variables you can use or want. Um, and we'll go through uh, how to set up this and how to set up uh, such as um, individual uh, like uh, technician updates. So you can, uh, you know, make it nice and pretty. So when the technician sends an update, it's all HTML formatted and your company looks like it's, uh, you know, like we're super professional company A because, you know, we have HTML branded templates. Um, so going back over here, it's very simple. It's very simplistic. Um, we have, we're uh, directly referencing the individual. Um, we're giving them the ticket number and we're giving them the ticket um, summary, uh, the title itself. Um, and we're saying, hey, someone's going to contact you. Um, now, this rendered, like I said, is from 2015, so it's old. This is the code that it's fully utilizing right now. And it's not efficient. 
there's way better stuff you can do with this. Um, <clears throat> but for 2015, the fact that it looks nice, semi nice when it's fully vetted and done, um, it's it you know it, it it does the job, and unfortunately, it can be kind of cumbersome to edit and change. Um, now I will warn you. Connectwise cheat treats all of these individual um, notification templates. Oh, there we go. Oh, so they changed it. This is fantastic. This is new to me. We didn't have a save template button on this screen. Uh, <laughs> so now that we can import, it's fantastic. So uh, well, I'll skip that section then since uh, they finally fixed that massive, horribly massive problem. Um, let me find my code. All right. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to wrap it in HTML tags. And then we're going to put a head, uh, close our header. And then we're going to put our body tag and then we're going to close our body tag. So, in our brief bit of uh, HTML coding we're going to do here, um, we're going to set up a, a fancy display here that uh, we're going to include stuff from other places. Now, this goes back to rendering, um, you know, uh, Outlook and stuff, rendering your, 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 your template. Um, so, you want to make sure that's because sometimes it may block, you know, depending on connection settings, uh, antivirus settings, you know, all those individual security settings and stuff. Um, but we're going to grab Bootstrap because I like Bootstrap 4. And I'm lazy. So we're going to get Bootstrap and we're going to just copy this fantastic link they give you and we're going to put it in our head. Now we have the entire Bootstrap CSS library here but we need a few more things we also need our these three down here this is the javascript that runs bootstrap this might be a li little heavy-handed just to let you know Oh my God, it's been a while. All right, so there's our, this now, now we have created an HTML template. So the hard work's done. We've included um, everything we could ever need um, in Bootstrap and the JavaScript, which is jQuery and Bootstrap. Um, so now we just want to build out how we want it to look. Um, and there's a couple of uh, things you can do to make it uh, look the way you want. Um, you can do giant... Uh, you know, like a, you could basically build a web page and have the email client render it. Um, we don't necessarily want to do that. Um, so what we want to do, let's see. why you never code on stream because it just looks uh, horrible. 
and we don't we want that to be fluid we don't want that to be uh, small so let's let's do I'm gonna do a row. And then inside the row, we're gonna call this our, uh, one of our columns. Um, So as you can see, uh, what we've just added has set, uh, if you look, it's got a slight um, uh, padding to the left side here compared to Hello World. Um, and it's uh, right below it. And we have, uh, we're gonna build out a multiple row um, column kinda like this. Um, this is written in tables, so we're going to do it completely in uh, div tags because div is the new, well, it's not new. Um, div is how we want to do everything. So div class row, div class call, close. Where's our body? And all right. Now we're stacked on top of each other the way we want to be. So there's multiple ways you can do um, with this. Um, if you want, let's say you want to have uh, you want to have your logo on the left side, um, and then you want to have some text in the middle to the right. Um, you can actually create multiple columns um, inside, and it will auto uh, it will properly uh, show them the spacing. So, so instead of going across the entire page, we're now split in half. Um, and you could do so again if you wanted to. And we'll just continue to shrink, shrink and get okay. Um, with uh, utilizing Bootstrap, uh, you can, uh, there, there's, limitless potential to how you want to organize your um, setup, um, you, you know, as far as what you want, um, what kind of layout wireframe you want. Um, really? Really, Gavin? You hurt me, Gavin, with that. But yeah, that's exactly, um, you could utilize that if you wanted to. Um, Gavin put a fancy thing inside the GeekCast channel inside MSP Geek. If you're not a part of MSP Geek, go to slack.mspgeek.com and you can join. It's free. Um, I don't think anybody's on there, but. Um, so we want to, let me find my panels. <clears throat> been a while since I've I've written
so we're going to put logo. So in here in our body data, let's build out um, a card. our number all right so we built out a little card that's got our uh, ticket number in it and below the card title, we're going to put our body class. Received your issue and and a waiting and available technician. The technician um, let's just do that. I'm not buying. All right. So As you can see, we have our ticketing number and our data, and we have this fancy little card that they have. Um, let us... get real fancy with it. Let's just change this to card header and let's put in a footer. All right, so we've uh, specifically s s split everything out, uh, gave it a fancy um, look to it. Um, we've added in additional stuff. Um, you could actually just wipe out and put the logo on top if you really wanted to. Um, but this seems a little bit bland. So let's do instead of having this down here, because some of our clients decide to put in critical tickets 
inside uh, via email and no one sees them because they're critical tickets and because the client didn't tell anybody. So we're just going to remind them here. We're going to put a fancy... Oh, look, we had a nice little fancy red alert strap there saying, hey, if it's critical, call us. Call us now. Please. Please call us. Um, I will not be putting any nested iframes. Um, nor will I be putting in uh, marquees. Uh, I, I would like to put it. I could put a marquee in. And we can go completely 1990 with it, with a uh, we'll go MySpace colors. We can put uh, pink, neon pink on neon green. Um, I'm sure that would go well. Um, so, and there's uh, Bootstrap offers a bunch of different alert, uh, different uh, alert colors. You can do a green, you know, hey, we got your ticket. Um, hey, call us red, yellow. Um, there's so many different things you can do with, with uh, Bootstrap itself. Um, it's, it's used as a foundation for hundreds of different templates, web templates, admin templates all, all around. So um, it's, it's a great tool to work with because it's mostly already built out, mostly already done. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, setting up um, a, a whole bunch of CSS code or anything like that. Um, So let's continue to set up our HTML. Um, and I've got a great idea. Stream play. I don't want this view. All right, so let's put in our MSP Geek logo. I'm just going to cheat. Ooh. Oh, look, we, uh, we're logoed now.
po' drama già So, now that we have our logo, let's put in let's see if you would like to view your previous tickets. Please visit the client portal here. And then this should now have a fancy thing there. Boom, click it, now that happens. All right, so now scroll in so we can easily see this because of my 4k man monitor um i don't think we need i don't think we need any footer data we'll just move this row because i think uh, the card itself covers it helps if I fix that. All right, so now we have a uh, pretty bland looking um, pretty bland looking critical ticket. You know, hey, uh, ticket itself. So that we have this, we have something we can uh, put inside of manage. So if we go here, we click on source, we get rid of all this, and we paste what we want. If we click on source, um, it doesn't look anything. So let's save this. Uh, don't you hate on Mixie? That's all I got. It's required by company. Um, so, theoretically, if you input this and sent this off to... Um, yes, we use Zoltus. Uh, if you sent this off and, and a new, uh, new update, the client would get this. Um, so we never want to use sender's first name. We always do uh, whatever the email connector is. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you can be triggered on you want to. Um, I'll call Mindy in here, and he will uh, erase you. Yes, it should. Um, the uh, browser itself may not completely import uh, the entirety of the JavaScript and the CSS itself. Um, but we can, since I have the code for this one, since this one is entirely uh, written in tables, HTML and CSS, um, it will input here as if you saw it in the browser. Um, because they don't uh, pull the data, you won't see it all fancy and pretty like that. Um, so we'll save this one as uh, 2015 
HTML, CSS only. Because everything's contained in the email itself. Uh, it depends. Um, it, it should be allowed. Um, most are allowed anyway, if you ever get a marketing email. Um, it, it really just, you know, you kind of have to test it. Um, I mean, you don't have to use Bootstrap. You can manually code in uh, all the CSS that you want. Um, you can... Uh, I wonder if you can do an import inside a header tag and get it that way. Um, I'll, that's something I'll probably have to research, um, which is interesting. Um, but yes, this should uh, properly send out. So if we save and close this, oh, I got to send the subject. Um, save. Now it's done. And now we have a notification step. I have to. All right, so um, uh, I've never done the, the, the CSS J JavaScript importing as well. Uh, CSS should work because you have to, uh, considering the amount of emails you get, you have to be able to import that. I don't know what the JavaScript, that's going to be the only thing that I'm not 100% on. Um, uh, let's do email reply. So... Uh, a lot of times you want to have your technicians um, you want to set up your uh, yes it's teams I have to use teams for work uh, you want to set up you want to set up your um, technicians reply <laughs> um, that's nice Gavin Super nice. Um, so uh, you want to set up to where you eat, to your, your engineers, when they email out, it looks like uh, they're emailing themselves to the client. Um, you want to you wanna have it to where it looks like you've opened up Outlook, sent an email to the client, and then closed Outlook. You know, you make it all fancy and whatnot. So there's a couple of ways you can do this, um, depending on how you want to have your signatures. Um, sometimes you can have... Uh, you can set the source. Uh, so let's let's just import the HTML one. So um, we want to remove this. We want to remove this. Let's remove all this. So let's put in let's find so this is time entry notes this will output all the uh, uh, this will output the time entry itself into the notes form um, this will not include the new notes the new fancy formatting um, for that you have to use this one uh, you know, time entry notes formatted. Um, and uh, let me find where are you at? You're right here somewhere. Uh, may or may not be cheating.
Uh, that's interesting, um, Kevin. That's a it's a very it's a very good point. Uh, I'm aware it's electrical. Uh, it's just audio interference. I just don't know exactly what 100 percent is causing it, and I don't know how to get rid of it. Um, my setup is uh, kind of janky. Um, it's a it's a miracle it's even working to be honest. Um, but you can hear me with a slight buzz. Um, but at least you can hear me now. Um, I've, I've got plans to purchase uh, an audio card. Um, to, to try to alleviate some of the, the cross interference. Yes, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be sure to pass that on, uh, Batman. You know, hey, I need to do, uh, I need you to spend a couple hundred bucks on me so that I can, um, you know, not work. So, um, yeah, Mindy's not, Mindy's not going to authorize to, to buy it. He can't authorize, I don't think he could authorize to purchase me stuff. He'd have to get that through the CEO. Um, uh, but so there's a couple of ways you could do it. You can design your, your signature so it looks like it's, uh, you know, however you want it to be, um. I have music, but music's not working, Kyle. I, I, I tried to set it up. It's completely broken, 100% broken. Not going to happen again. It's never going to happen again. Um... Okay, so I'm now just gonna 100% ignore Kyle. Um, so uh, you can hand design it uh, inside here, um, and you can do you can like replace this stuff. Uh, if I can just type this right. And that will override everything. Um, it's, yeah, no, Batman. It, it wasn't occurring to me as I was typing it out. Um, so you want to put, uh, you know, like the tags and stuff for everything on there. Or you can copy your Outlook email signature, which I'm just going to copy this for the sake, and replace it with member signature. And you can make every single one of your employees... Let me save this because... You come over here to your username. Night, Gavsto. Um, click on My Account. It's going to open a fancy new page. And inside the My Account, <gasps> you have a signature. You can copy-paste. You can go to source. You can have a fancy HTML. You can import. Oh, my God. Um, that is amazing, Ashley. Congratulations. 
Uh, Gavin should legit send those out every time someone gets an update for Gav, 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 Gav coins. Um, so if you save this every time, uh, your employee, um, then you can standardize it this way and import it every time. Um, so the only problem with this method specifically is if, uh, you decide to change your signature for some reason, change your title or whatever, uh, every employee will have to update that needs to update inside their uh, My Account page. Which isn't too big of a deal, but it can be a headache sometimes when you do a mass change or something. So when this goes out, it'll say the time entry notes, and then it'll also have this at the bottom, uh, unformatted completely. Um, and it'll look like a fancy... Uh, email itself. Uh, now, if you want to be like most vendors and dump the entire ticket, you just do SR detail formatted at the very bottom and you'll dump the remainder of the ticket that's already been input, um, the detail itself. So now, closed loop, this is where you set everything. Uh, we want to turn on updates to discussion, um, and depending on, we generally uh, have it updates discussion and updates to all um, for closed loop. Um, and we set this as our help desk email. And we wanna send it to contacts and resources uh, and any CCs, we want to use our specific template email reply so that every time we send out an email uh, in a closed loop format, it will go, it'll utilize this template for its, its details and data. So if we save this, um, I, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, we'll find out because I don't have any, any SMTP or email set up in here. Um, so put a new ticket for whatever company's in here. Uh, you sound good. Thirsty design, that's that's me. Um, I don't care. Boom, let's see if it sends me an email reply. I highly doubt it. Do 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 do. This is what I get for not doing a, a setup stream first. I just got to remember how to do this because it's been like a long time since I've done this. Finish set up tables. Okay, that's set up.
All right. Where are you at? This is the perfect though. It's 2010. That is sad. Um, we're gonna do 2019. Oh. 2019. Boom. Done. New note. What X members? I tried Ashley. All right, here's our uh, fancy. Oh yeah, I didn't load an image there. <laughs> uh, if she can get free of it, then we there's. Then I'll give her free karma. Um, but here's our fancy um, display here. Um, as you can see, here's the new ConnectWise version of the ticket template. Um, for some reason, I did not include my member signature, which is odd. Um, But it is here, and with closed loop, it'll happen every time. Night, Gavin. Um, and you want to set time entry options, you know, up to the ticket discussion. And then I did forget to mention, if we do want to have these go out, we need to add email notifications and send them to the proper person, contact for this item. So it goes. Or you can do, you know, CC for this item as well, if there is one. And then uh, the service manager, because we have a lot of problems with them not actually pulling up on tickets, so we're just gonna do service manager. That's that's the that's a joke. I don't know if it actually happens or not. It's just for for good reference. Um, so that's really um, how you can brand your emailing setups, and you can uh, have a a specific um, email notifications uh, on status change. Um, so if they change the ticket status, you can they'll get an email notification on it. Um, it only happens once. Uh, so if you swap a ticket in, does it only happen once? It's been a while. Um, oh, it's late. Either way, uh, you can set it on. So if you want to have a specific status for a sign, you can say uh, uh, you can pull out the um, ticket owner. You can pull out uh, specific individuals. Um, A whole bunch of different uh, uh, tokens they use. Um, this also can help you if you're setting up individual um, Gav is still typing and refusing to go to bed. Just, just an FYI to those interested. Um,
but you can utilize these uh, the, this full information. Uh, anything in the variables um, can be pulled if it's available uh, on this individual item. Um, obviously, if it's not a project ticket, it's not going to be able to pull project data. Um, and things along that nature. Um, and that, in, in a nutshell, is uh, HTML and uh, how to set up notifications for statuses. Is there any questions from anyone about anything, really? Uh, truck and arrow. I have an AT2020 and I also have a mixer. Um, I don't know if it's cable quality or what. My favorite song. I, I don't have a favorite song. I have a lot of songs I like. And it varies from what kind of mood I'm in. But I am a huge fan of Boys to Men. That was the Mario 64, Super Mario 64 uh, theme song. It was, uh, what was playing? Well, the <clears throat> well there's a couple of songs, but he's, he's specifically probably referring to Super Mario 64. No, no death metal. Um, it didn't come up, didn't have time. I mean, it may have played while I was waiting for the stream to come up or trying to get Twitch to let me stream. Um, but I do have good news. Uh, we have not dropped any frames aside from audio issues, which is the norm here at MSP Geek. Um, it's, it's, it's been phenomenal as far as upkeep and connections go. Um, I have not recorded this entire thing, so it's going to be fun trying to get the VOD. Uh <laughs> So that's going to be an interesting uh, explore because I didn't hit the record button because everything was breaking all at once. Um, any other questions? Uh, I'll answer anything for anyone. I am going to put the code up on MSP Geek. Um, both the bootstrap and the uh, default uh, standard code inside there. Um, If uh, you want to learn, you know, specifics of uh, CSS and um, CSM, C CWM is my product. I own it in its entirety. Um, this is a good website for those uh, who want to learn more. Um, there, it's a it's a good website. It allows you to try stuff yourself, and it, it goes in pretty in depth of what you uh, want to be able to do. Um, some cool stuff. Um, so if, if for basics and you want to kind of dip your toe into um, the pool that is web development and design, um, even with Bootstrap or not, you can uh, use the, I, I recommend this website. Um, it's, uh, it's usually one of the top hits if I Google anything related to HTML, CSS. Um, welcome, John. I don't know if you're on the stream or not, but you're now on the Geek Cash channel. Any other questions? Um, I mean, I'm here all night. It's it's only ten o'clock here, so okay, nothing else really going on. I got some contract work I could do, but I don't want to do that on stream because you know. Yep, W three schools is still around. Hasn't left. Sorry, I'm on a 4K monitor, so it I, I can understand that it's hard to read. Uh, if I need to zoom into anything, I'm happy to. Um, I 
But for those who want to utilize something uh, fancy for an IDE for, you know, doing HTML and CSS and stuff, uh, Notepad++ works. You already have that installed. You can use Notepad. It's not that big of a problem. Um, uh, you can learn MySQL from here as well. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily... Uh, I would learn with some with a with a goal in mind, so you can actually experiment with the the databases. Um, you can learn T SQL too if you're on premises and you want to learn my uh, Microsoft SQL. Um, it's a pretty good website to to get the basics of just about everything. So, um, I wonder if they have Power BI stuff because that'd be cool. They do not. I didn't think so. I mean, there's eight of you watching, so is there anything you want me to go over? Anyone, anything you want me to do? Anything you want me to cover? Um, uh, DAX is possibly the stupidest language ever invented. We are not moving to Discord ever. Uh, never, ever, never, 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 ever, never. It will not happen because Discord is stupid. Uh, if anything, would move to an open source platform. No, we don't have it. We don't have any app space. Actually, <laughs> everything's used. All the app spaces are used. We don't have any. We don't have. We can, no bridges, nothing. It's all dead. Uh, don't ask me what those apps are because uh, I don't know off the top of my head and I don't feel like clicking the button to find out. Uh, Discord's not bad. Discord is, is a good platform for a gaming community. For our community, it's, it's not a... I, I think it's a horrible... I don't think it's... It's not... Since its focus is more gaming communities and that type of stuff, it's 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 not designed for for real business applications. Um, the search, it everything comes with a historical search. You just have to pay for it with Slack. Um, they're okay. I mean, there's some, I mean, the ability to remove from channels and stuff is good, but again, it's, it's designed as a gaming channel. So it's, don't you hate on Spoonbot. I will bring Spoonbot in here and remove you. wants to die who wants to be first to get kicked uh, he doesn't need to be in here but it's nice that you invited him um, I mean I could work on my spoon bot Karma systems built. The issue is we have uh, it's triggered on a uh, reaction to someone's post. The problem is so time to to, to inform you how Slack works. So this is the beauty of Slack, and I say that with as much seething sarcasm as I can. Slack has bots. And everyone's aware of Slack bots. 
but Slack also has apps, which are different than bots, but Slack apps can have bots as well. So technically, I have a Spoon bot and a Spoon app bot. Spoon bot has all the uh, bank commands and the karma system because of the way uh, it looks, it watches chat every like half second to get reactions and get uh, bank commands. Slack app bot does more because it allows, uh, it takes web requests and stuff as well. I should be able to merge them. I just haven't gotten to the point to where I can do that. So where they both work at the same time. So the code functionality is there. It's built out and it works. So if you, uh, I forget, I think it's the MSP geek sign, uh, someone's reaction post is Spoonbot is working. Uh, then it will, uh, plus one them on the forums if they uh, have an account. Based on what your email address is, if they're the same, it'll match it and it'll go. It'll give it a plus one reaction, plus one karma or whatever it is. Yeah, that one. And then there's something else that does it too. I think a, a plus or something does it. I have to look. So. That is so fancy, Ashley. So fancy. Uh, you could not uh, plus one yourself. Yeah, let me know how it goes, uh, Batman. Uh, you can put them in. Uh, actually, you can if you want. You can put them in our. Um, uh, I'm going to post this in the Geek uh, Cast section of um, the forums, and you can just attach them there if you want.
Uh, let me know how that works. Definitely. I want to see how that, uh, if it displays right. Because um, there's other CSS uh, libraries you can use that pull in JavaScript in. There we go. Now let's see. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. LT alerts. I know there's nothing on the screen you're looking at right now, but... Um, we only have, uh, four maybe email statuses set up. We have, uh, we got your ticket. Um, we have the closed, we have the email, uh, reply and we have a closed, no response reply. Um, we, uh, both companies I've worked for, um, the philosophy is not emailing the client, um, automated wise, um, I did uh, theory out a system um, that would auto-close tickets if they didn't uh, update in time. Um, it would send an automated response. So basically you'd put it in uh, waiting on client and it would uh, wait a day and then email them and saying, hey, we haven't got your update uh, in, uh, we haven't updated you, can you please update the ticket? 
day two it would do the same thing and then day three it would just auto close the ticket if they haven't responded back um which is uh but they didn't want me to implement it I'm not using any built-in survey stuff. Um, it is it is baffling, Boots. Um, we, we don't use built-in survey stuff. We use uh, a, a similar service to Smileback. It's not Smileback, though. Um, it's customer thermometer, I think. Um, but basically, it's the smiley face system. They click on a smiley face, and then they enter comments if they want. Uh, and that does write back to CW. Um, manage. Uh, it does not. Uh, but we don't utilize anything as far as individual survey systems outside of manage. Uh, I mean, customer thermometer, smile back, they're all the same. They're all good. Um, ideally, you just want feedback from your clients, and that's the, in the systems they each have set up are uh, the, you know, very similar, and they're very easy for a client to, if they're upset, click an unhappy face, or if they're super elated, they click a smiley face. So, um, I've used both systems, and uh, I liked Smileback's admin interface. Um, uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed Smileback. I don't like customer thermometer as much as I like Smileback, but if it comes down to customer thermometers cheaper, then I would probably pick it. I mean, that's how close this. I mean, their systems are. I mean, they're virtually identical. Um, so... Yeah, so um, it gets it, it, it. I mean, there, you can set up notifications for alerts and stuff uh, in either system, um, and you can get immediately notified on who got a negative, um, uh, an unhappy face. <laughs> 